The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. That was the trick. Excellent. It sounds like we found the trick. And everyone should be able to hear me now. Excellent. Thumbs up from Rachel. We're winning. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, thank you, guys, for your patience. This is Holly from the Drupal Association. And um, we're going to get started now. I think we're all here. So, Lucia, I don't know if you want to... Um, I uh, want to get a recording going. Oh, it's already on. That's excellent. So we're set to go. Um, again, thanks everyone for being here. This is our quarterly update for the supporters uh, of the Drupal Association. And uh, we just want to give you a uh, heads up about what's going on over at the association and what you can, what you can expect. So um, lots of updates in here because there's definitely lots going on. So let's get some housekeeping out of the way again. Um, again, welcome. Um, if I haven't, I think I've said it like four times, but in various states of audio uh, completion. My name's Holly. I'm the executive director here at the Drupal Association, and uh, let's get some of this housekeeping done. If you are listening from your computer, um, we definitely recommend you know a headset for our folks who are speaking today. Make sure you've got your mic and speaker audio options set the right way. Um, we're going to keep you guys muted during the call, just helps keep down on the background noise, but you do have a Q&A window, so feel free to pop questions in there. I'm going to keep an eye out on that throughout the session. Uh, to keep things moving. Um, and then if you hear anything interesting, you want to share anything, um, our Twitter handle is at DrupalAssos, so feel free to share, share away. We'd be uh, happy to see stuff out in the Twitterverse. So those are our housekeeping notes. Um, <clears throat> let's get started with some of our content. Uh, just a reminder, in case you forgot, we got a few things coming up. Uh, going on here in the community. So uh, DrupalCon Los Angeles is coming up May 11th through 15th, and uh, it's definitely looking like a strong event. We're excited to be there uh, shortly, and we're debuting a brand new higher ed summit at Los Angeles, which already sold out. So uh, very cool to have that event on the books and, and have so many people there. Uh, and after Los Angeles, of course, we're going to Barcelona, 21st to 25th of September, um, which is going to be a gorgeous venue, an amazing place. Um, the community there is so excited to have us, and they're already cooking up lots of great stuff. So it's our next DrupalCon. And Global Training Days, for those of you who do any kind of Drupal training, um, uh, or have great Drupal staff who want to help bring new Drupal developers out into the world. Uh, Global Training Days, we hold those once per quarter um, and definitely recommend you check those out and, and help spread the word about Drupal. Um, we have had them on every continent except Antarctica at this point. So uh, if you are going to Antarctica and would like to train the penguins, we would be excited to have you so that we could check that off our list. No rim shot or any kind of, no? Okay. <laughs> so, sorry about that joke. All right, here's what we're actually going to cover today. Um, uh, I'm going to share some Drupal Association news with you. Um, we have a few things going on over here. Um, and then we will talk about some Drupal.org improvements with uh, Josh, our CTO. Um, then I'm going to hand things over to Joe Saylor, who is going to talk about um, uh, Marketing Drupal, oh sorry, and Carrie who will um, ad uh, address some of the plans that we have for advertising on Drupal.org and our Drupal Jobs platform. So that is our plan for today and what we're what we're going to sail through. And of course I just uh, want to stop uh, for a second before we get into the content and thank all of our partners for, for making this happen. Hopefully you see yourselves here, but uh, it's been amazing how much support the Drupal community has been able to put into the association to fund all of the work that we do, and we're just really so pleased that um, you've not only shown that support, that, but that we get the chance to work with all of you. Um, we really love our partners, and it's been so much fun to get to know these companies um, and what you're doing um, and, and how to support that. So. With that, let's talk about what you're able to make happen, for example. Um, a little bit of growth over here at the association. Um, we don't have a ton planned for 2015, but these four folks represent some of that. Um, we just hired a CFO, Matt Sagawa, who joined us a couple of weeks ago. Um, and he uh, will be based here in Portland. Uh, we have a new content manager, Brad Fields, also based here in Portland. Um, he's working on some of the work that Joe will tell you about here today around some new newsletters and other content initiatives. 
some of you may know that um, Stephanie Alhaj uh, left us uh, last month for um, different pastures. She's doing some project management uh, over at Amazie, which is pretty cool. Uh, and so we have a new team member on the con team, and that is Tina Krauss, also here in Portland. And um, you're going to get an update on digital advertising from Carrie. Um, we need someone to help make that program run. So we have a new digital ads manager. He starts on April 20th. His name's uh, Jenner Umali. He's a really great guy. So we're really excited to have these four new folks on our team um, and, uh, you know, get them uh, uh, they have various levels of experience with uh, Drupal and the Drupal community, so we're looking forward to get them all uh, inaugurated, initiated, but not hazed, because that's wrong. So these folks are going to be joining us, and we also just want to take a moment to say a huge thanks uh, to, to our friend Don, um, who, to whom we own uh, a big debt of gratitude. Um, Don is, came out of retirement to come work with us and help us get our sales program off the ground, um, and he's going to go back into retirement. And uh, we are um, so grateful for his time with us, um, and we're definitely sad to see him go, but uh, most of our staff is really excited that we're probably going to get more shark pictures, more skydiving pictures, more general um, uh, you know, mountain photography out of Don now that he's on full retirement. So we look forward to hearing about his his adventures and, and hope that he um, stays in touch with us and stays part of our community. So I know many of you have worked with Don and know what a great guy he is, um, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely all miss him. So thanks so much, Don. So those are our, our staffing updates. Uh, for the association. Uh, we also have a new board member, in case you somehow missed it. Uh, we just ran our 2015 general election for our at-large board member seat. Um, these folks are elected to two-year terms, uh, and they are staggered, so we elect one person per year. So Matthew Saunders is our uh, candidate who was elected in the last round. He's on for two terms. Um, and then we just ran the next set of elections. Uh, Addison Berry was our winner. Uh, folks should be familiar uh, with her. She is Add One Son in Drupal, uh, in the Drupalverse. And she works with Lullabot, um, does the Drupalize Me podcast, uh, shares that responsibility over there now. Um, and although she is American by birth, she resides in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, so uh, she can definitely represent that sensibility. Her first board meeting will be the board retreat in Los Angeles that precedes uh, DrupalCon LA. So we're excited to welcome her on, and we actually have our official onboarding with her uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So it's a busy week. Um, let's see. Oh, one more thing just I wanted to share about elections. Um, we're excited that Addison is the winner, but I would also love to just share that it was definitely a huge election for us. So we had 24 candidates, more than we've ever had before. Uh, we had over 1,400 votes, um, which is uh, a big number for us in our elections, although we definitely want to see that get bigger and bigger. Um, and we also, um, we had two goals for these elections. One was to increase the diversity of candidates. Um, we had one, just one female candidate, but we did have candidates from all over the world this time, which is fantastic. We had candidates from China and India, um, all over Latin America, several Europeans, um, Americans, also Canadians. So again, we really covered the continents uh, with this election, which was fantastic, and we were really excited to see that, that kind of diversity. Um, and then the second goal for the elections was for us to be able to increase voter participation. Uh, and so we definitely did that year over year. Um, the last year, the last time we ran elections, uh, we had only about 660 ballots cast. So as I mentioned, we had over 1,400 this time, which is great. Uh, so we definitely feel like we, we succeeded with our goals for the program overall. Um, but we are now in the process of getting feedback from candidates themselves about how to make it better. And we're going to be focusing more on uh, voter turnout for the next election as well. So some final notes about elections there. Um, and then we also just want to uh, talk a little bit about DrupalCon Latin America, uh, which we just held in February in Bogota, Colombia, um, which was a totally amazing experience. Um, 
So we had uh, almost 300 attendees there, um, which was a, a good solid turnout um, for the event. Um, and again, a lot of geographic diversity, especially within Latin America. So it truly was a Latin American event, which is fantastic. Um, we had um, a, a really interesting challenge with this con um, that taught us several lessons that we're really looking forward to applying to future events, particularly around translations. So we were able to, um, at the con, in several of the sessions, provide simultaneous live translation between Spanish, English, and Portuguese, uh, the three uh, you know, main spoken languages in Latin America. The session videos, so they're available in those languages as well, which is pretty stupendous. So we learned a lot about translation <laughs> at those sessions. Um, which we can apply to lots of work across Drupal.org and our live events all over the place. So um, that was really fantastic. Um, and then just a, a couple of other key points. Um, this was a really highly participatory and engaged group of folks. They were so excited. Con the way that it was scheduled, um, so that's huge turnout. Um, and it was a really uh, it was a really great sprint where. There are folks, um, lots of folks who had been participating in Drupal as developer for a long time for their clients, but had never given back to the project. Um, you know, finally got to learn about that, and it was really amazing. Um, and I think just, uh, you know, we had an overall NPS score of 80 for this event, which is remarkable. <laughs> so I think it's just a testament to how much this community wanted to be brought into the fold officially. Um, and we saw that uh, coming out of the con as well. Um, several candidates um, put their name in the hat for a board seat. Um, a couple of them did really well in the election uh, as well. So that was fantastic to see. Um, and we saw a huge bump in Global Training Day's participation from Latin America coming out of this event as well. So hopefully we're able to keep that community momentum uh, rolling forward. Um, and, um, you know, more and more of these folks will get more and more involved um, in, the, in the broader community. So that was a great event. And just uh, hats off to um, Rachel and the DrupalCon team for, for making that happen um, during a time when we had lots of transition uh, going on uh, to not only, you know, just make the event happen, but have it be such a success was pretty amazing. So good stuff. All right, and I think my last update from the association is our Drupal 8 Accelerate program overview. So if you had not heard, um, we are, um, we are, we've opened up a fund of money uh, to be made available to the community with the purpose of accelerating the release of Drupal 8. So we're very focused on um, fixing the release blockers right now, uh, making sure that those get out of the way um, and that the Drupal 8 team can get to release candidate stage as quickly as possible. So uh, the way that it's structured uh, right now, um, the association kicked in an initial $62,500 of funding. Uh, the board worked with several um, their organizations and a couple of others uh, to be able to provide um, a matching $62,500, which brought us to $125,000 for the fund. And now um, we are working with the community to match that $125,000 and bring the total amount available to $250,000. And what we're doing with that money is working with the, uh, the core maintainers, so the folks who are really in charge of getting uh, this version to a release candidate state um, to identify the issues that need to be addressed, um, the people that can address them, and match those things up with funding. So um, there are two ways that that can happen. Um, the core maintainers, formerly known as branch maintainers, uh, <laughs> but I haven't updated this slide since uh, since uh, they released a, a post last week with sort of some updated governance language. But the core maintainers um, can do some top-down funding. This, uh, this issue over here, this release blocker on menuing, we've got to get to that. Uh, you know, this group of people should work on it. Here's the scope. Let's make this happen. Um, and then we also have a community process, so anyone can go to the website 
um, request a grant to work on a particular issue uh, and possibly receive funding that is authorized from the core maintainers uh, at that point as well. So the core maintainers are really doing the deciding about how to push the project forward. Um, our role at the association is to uh, be the administrators of these grants, so we make sure that people get paid. Uh, when the work is done. We're also um, keeping all the logistics in place, the list of grants that are going out, their state of completion, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, uh, you know, the, like I said, the end goal here is that we're able to produce uh, a release candidate sooner than would have happened uh, without the funding. Uh, it's definitely starting to pay off at this point. We have funded over a dozen issues, um, and if you go to the site, um, uh, you can go check out the list of funded uh, issues, and uh, you'll see that you know we've knocked off. Uh, I think my last count yesterday was something like 25, 25 release blockers. So. Um, 25 issues, so it's uh, it's it's definitely starting to get into play. We're really excited about the progress that's being made. On the fundraising side, like I said, our goal is $250,000. Uh, we started with $125,000 from the from the association and the board fundraising. Um, we're right now at about $139,000, uh, so we've raised about $14,000 from the community. Um, the campaign's been open about a week, so um, we're really excited, and we're going to keep pushing forward with that. And um, you know, definitely feel free to help us spread the word and make that happen. You can. Um, join us as a fundraiser and help uh, help get your community members to to uh, contribute to the campaign as well, um, or just help spread the word. And that is it for me. So I don't see any questions in the queue. Um, that's the end of the Drupal Association updates, and I'd love to just turn things over to Josh. And let me just make sure. There you are. Here I am. Okay, so I want to do a, a really brief recap of uh, kind of what's happened with Drupal.org in the first quarter of this year. Uh, one, we've uh, done a lot of work uh, that has kind of culminated in the last couple of months around better account creation and new user experience. Um, it's a lot easier to sign up now, um, especially if you're coming from one of our sub-sites. Uh, we tried to make, in particular for the process for uh, creating an account whenever you're coming from Drupal Jobs, we tried to make that a little bit easier. Um, and the good news is, even though it's better for people, it's worse for spammers, which we really like. Um, the, another thing that's happened as a part of the account creation work and, and some of the things that we've been doing there is we've moved, most of our newsletters at this point have been moved over to MailChimp. So uh, you can still sign up for them straight from your profile. Um, but uh, our delivery is a lot better. We've got a, a, more, a more stylized uh, layout. Looks a lot better whenever we send them out. And I think Joe's going to talk a little bit more about uh, a really big announcement as it relates to newsletters, which most of you are probably aware of by now. But um, we've we've relaunched the the, the uh, Drupal newsletter that's supposed to come out weekly. So that's that's some big news. Um, issue credits. Now this is something that I'm, I'm going to make an ask of everyone who's uh, listening and uh, who may be listening to the webcast afterwards. Um, if you have an organization and you have developers that are contributing on behalf of your organization, we've got this great new feature in the issue queues so that you can have the developers um, give credit to your organization or to the customers that are funding the work and we can actually track that as a part of how our ecosystem works. This is a, a really exciting uh, approach to tracking how organizational, um, how organizations influence the code of an open source project, and uh, we're excited about it. Uh, Dries has a, a, a huge presentation on this uh, as a part of the, the Amsterdam keynote. Um, we're excited, too, about the ways that we can start highlighting these organizations that contribute time and money to the project. Um, what you'll see in our in our plans for what's up coming up next, uh, our user profiles are going to be improving, but we're also uh, we have plans for improving the organizational profiles to show this information. We've also been, um, I will say, uh, neck deep in a content strategy project. Uh, it's it's been a lot of great work. Uh, we've been working with Form One on this. Um, we are at the point now that we have a new content model that is in review with the working groups and we're about to be publishing some blog posts to the wider community to give some feedback on some uh, new content types that we're planning on implementing on Drupal.org. It's really going to 
um, take Drupal.org and into kind of its next uh, next phase as a site. Um, we're excited because it also is going to make Drupal.org a shining example of what's possible with Drupal, which um, has not always been the case. It's it's an awesome site. It scales incredibly well, um, but whenever it comes to really showing off the the relationships and the content capabilities within Drupal, uh, Drupal.org is is not always the best example outside of the issue cubes. Um, we're also excited about a governance plan that we're putting in place for these new content types, so that we can make it really clear. Um, how to contribute to Drupal.org, and what um, what the roles and permissions should be for each content type, and, and getting that out. Holly, can you go ahead and advance me a slide? So on the roadmap, uh, one of the things you'll see we've we've hit our uh, milestone of yes, it did. I, I see the Drupal.org roadmap now. Um, I think everyone knows that we had uh, seven initiatives that we really uh, highlighted as our strategic roadmap that we wanted to focus on. Um, we've we've hit the first initiative. Our new user plan, our new user account creation process is definitely improved. Uh, there will be some other small tweaks on that over the over the course of the next few months, but uh, we're calling that you know at this point done. Um, we have organization and user profile improvements, which are in progress right now. Uh, Drupal events, which is the new home of all the DrupalCon websites, uh, that's in progress. But as many of you have seen, uh, DrupalCon LA has launched on that platform, and it is looking phenomenal. Uh, the content strategy work that I was just talking about is going to lead to some pretty significant changes in design to Drupal.org, and that work is in progress right now. Uh, we're doing a lot of infrastructure work around uh, building up some um, best practices for how an infrastructure that works like ours uh, should be uh, configured. Um, and we're trying to get a little bit of independence from some of the OSL shared services so that we can have services that are um, tailored to the Drupal.org experience. Uh, Drupal CI, which is Drupal Continuous Integration, for those of you who are familiar with our TestBot infrastructure, this Drupal CI is going to be the replacement for that TestBot infrastructure. Um, it's in progress right now, and it's actually really exciting, the Drupal 8 Accelerate uh, program, um, an example of it being put into practice is we have a sprint going on this week where we've brought in some of the key contributors from that uh, from the community, and they're working directly with the My Infrastructure team to begin putting in the final pieces so that we can get, uh, the, the idea is by the end of this week we'll have um, at least a behind the scenes working example of the Drupal CI system and infrastructure. So we're very excited about that. It's also a great example of the Drupal 8 Accelerate program funding great work. Um, and I just saw Rachel LOL. So heads up, Holly. <laughs> no one direct message Holly, because whatever you say is going to show up to the supporting partners. Uh, <laughs> So uh, the remaining uh, roadmap uh, items that we have on there, we're going to be starting issue workflow improvements very soon. This is uh, kind of making our Git process a little bit more um, uh, seamless and a little bit easier to onboard new people into that process because right now it's a fairly uh, complex process for people to learn. Uh, we are kicking off some work on the localize.drupal.org upgrade in the coming month, and uh, the goal is to, to have localize.drupal.org upgraded right around the time of DrupalCon LA, which is uh, another key Drupal 8 um, uh, dependency that we want to have out of the way. Um, we're doing some work, and actually a lot of the, the work around search is actually going to happen as a part of rolling out the new content types from the content strategy. We're going to be doing some work about the uh, Drupal.org search, making it a lot more usable. Um, and also some improved tools to find and select projects. So we're beginning to collect some metrics on our projects, and we're going to be using those metrics uh, to help people make better decisions around which modules are the right fit for the solution that they're trying to build with Drupal. Um, and last and certainly not least is uh, we, we've been looking to do an update of Drupal groups, and we're exploring a couple different paths with that. Um, but um, Suffice it to say that we're really focused on making a better experience for local user groups and for interest-based groups um, and making it so that we can really grow the Drupal community using the collaborative tools in Drupal groups. Holly, could you go ahead and give me the next slide? Nope, I cannot. There we go. <laughs> I had one job, Josh. <laughs> it's okay. 
It's okay. Um, the last thing I, I really wanted to put out there was just a, uh, a sincere thank you to the supporting partners. Uh, you've made it possible for us to build up an incredible team. Um, that the last hire was made in November, so I, I'm really feeling confident we're, we're finally hitting our stride in terms of um, having full capacity of what this team is capable of. And it's beginning to show lots of changes on Drupal.org uh, over the last few weeks. Uh, lots of uh, new features, a uh, much better structure going forward, and uh, it's your support that's made that possible. So um, very much a heartfelt thanks to all of the supporting partners. Um, you're making Drupal better, and I really appreciate that. And that's it for me. I believe uh, up next. Um, Joe, or yeah, I keep going backwards somehow. No, we go. you, you were going forwards. We had a Drupal 8 Accelerate slide that was twice on the deck. Yeah. Oh, it was so nice. I wanted to talk about it twice, huh? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. <laughs> no problem. Awesome. Excellent. So uh, jo I think, Joe, we'll throw things over to you if you are ready. I am. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Excellent. Yeah, so I always like to um, throw in a couple of uh, recent articles when we do this update. Uh, it's kind of fun to, to show off Drupal in the news. Uh, the Australian federal government just went live on their uh, Drupal-based platform, and they've got several departments migrating to to that platform. So that's great to see. It's been in the works for some time, and it did just go live uh, recently. Uh, another article from Computer World, Drupal getting off the island with version 8. Uh, a real nice article about Drupal 8, and it's always fantastic to see a key message like that right in the headline. And uh, a nice... Uh, piece there about uh, why digital marketers should be looking at Drupal uh, this year. And uh, those are those are linked. So um, I believe folks get the uh, presentation after word. Uh, is that right, Holly? Absolutely, yep. Yep, so you can check those out. Also wanted to uh, point out an exciting uh, project we're doing this year. Uh, we're calling it a pilot project to see how this goes. Uh, but we are going to be exhibiting Drupal at two European events. They're listed there. The first one is DM Exco in Cologne, Germany, September 16th through the 17th. Uh, it's really a show that uh, caters to the confluence of IT and marketing, so a nice sweet spot for, for Drupal there. And then the Festival of Marketing, which will be in London on November 12th through the 13th, and that's really a kind of a cutting-edge uh, digital marketing event. Uh, we'll have a Drupal president, uh, presence in the exhibitor area. We'll have Drupal collateral, uh, case studies, everything will be branded uh, Drupal in the exhibit. Um, we're using a co-marketing model for this. So uh, Drupal businesses have the opportunity to actually uh, kick in some funds to uh, help pay for the space, for the exhibitor space, and in exchange they get some benefits including a representative uh, to be in the booth at the event. Um, as of this morning, I believe there are still opportunities for Drupal businesses to participate in that, so uh, if you are interested in getting more detail on, on how that works, um, Johanna is the person to talk to and her email address is there. So very excited about that. Also, Josh referenced this a few minutes ago. We've relaunched the Drupal newsletter uh, believe it or not, there was a Drupal newsletter uh, that ended publication in 2008. Uh, so there really hasn't been anything like this since 2008, but we've relaunched it. And um, what it is is a, a really nice um, way to get some tips and how-tos and kind of technical marketing out to the community. That was something that was really been lacking, um, was sort of a curated vehicle with uh, tips and, and tricks and how-tos, tutorials, uh, news, project news. The uh, Drupal Association newsletter has you know, primarily news about what we're up to at the association as well as some project news, but this is really about um, how to make Drupal work for you and how to be successful with Drupal. So very excited about it. Uh, we've got about 40,000 subscribers right now. Uh, and it is, uh, you'll notice there, it's, it's actually a syndication of the Weekly Drop newsletter, which is an excellent newsletter, uh, a community newsletter. Uh, and we decided, you know, at this point, not to reinvent the wheel and just syndicate that uh, newsletter. So 
um, it is the weekly drop. Um, and if, if you'd like to subscribe to it, if you're not already, you can go to your Drupal.org profile and uh, it is uh, there. You can subscribe to a number of, of newsletters, including the Drupal Association newsletter, information for Drupal businesses, and the Drupal newsletter, along with a couple of others. Uh, and uh, Carrie is actually going to talk a little bit more about that here in a moment. And before I toss it over to Carrie, just wanted to um, also point out the Branding and Marketing Committee, uh, which is a Drupal Association board committee, um, has been uh, not super active over the last uh, probably 18 months uh, due to difficulties in finding a, a chair who had the time to dedicate to it. Uh, but we did, uh, if you've been on the board calls, you've heard Gina Montoya uh, did step up to, um, to become the chair of the Branding and Marketing Committee. She is awesome and she has just formed a committee and uh, we have our first meeting tomorrow as a matter of fact so really looking forward to that and I know one of the things that's high on her agenda is um, a collateral refresh so uh, taking a look at the, the Drupal collateral that is out there there is actually quite a bit uh, but it needs to be uh, curated and uh, refreshed and updated and um, I know that's that's high on her list so look for more details on that uh, if you're looking for collateral to either pass through to your clients or your colleagues um, that'll be coming soon and I'll, I'll keep everyone posted. And with that, I will toss it over to Carrie. Thanks, Joe. This is Holly. And Carrie, you should be there. All right, I'm here. Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Lucina, the product manager for digital advertising on Drupal.org, as well as Drupal Jobs. Um, are we on my slide, Holly? Oh yeah, we are. Uh, the, I wanted to talk to you about three new digital advertising opportunities that are available in Q2. Uh, the first is curated topical content with banner opportunities. Holly, could you advance the slide, please? Um, so we're rolling out a lot of new content on Drupal.org and then building in banner opportunities for advertisers. So you can target banner ads to contextually relevant pages right on Drupal.org. We have a, a wide range of topics. Um, it ranges from Drupal 8 to building you know, a nonprofit or government site, managing media, and a whole lot more. Um, so as always, we'd love to hear your feedback if there are topics that you don't see as covering um, that might be important to the community. Um, next slide. We are partnering with a company called Perfect Audience for this new product that we're calling Audience Extension. Um, this essentially allows advertisers to target Drupal.org visitors through their partner Connect platform. Um, it's a secure, anonymous way to advertiser, advertise to Drupal.org visitors outside of Drupal.org. Um, so we're plugging into their platform, which allows advertisers to programmatically reach the Drupal.org Drupal audience through ad networks and exchanges while they're on other sites. Um, we have an audience pool of over 700,000 Drupal.org visitors already. Uh, and why we really like this product is that there's no minimum spend requirement. Um, you can test with any size budget. Pricing and CPMs are very competitive with other retargeting exchanges or, for example, with Google AdWords. Um, the campaigns are managed through our partner, Perfect Audience, but if you're interested in, in testing it out, please reach out to your association rep and we can walk you through the process and, and how to get going. And next slide. We are launching sponsored dedicated email for our partners. Um, we're allowing users to opt in to an email subscription to receive special offers from our partners upon signing up for a Drupal.org membership. Um, here's an example that we, we mocked up using Drupalize Me. I hope the folks over there don't mind, but it's just a really good example because they're offering a very special discount to Drupal.org visitors. And the goal is that we will be offering some kind of unique offer or benefit to the user when we send these out. We, um, the association just launched the opt-in in February, so the list is relatively small right now. We're a little over 1,200 names, but growing very fast. Um, and although, although the list is small, it's really fresh, it's really you know, high quality, 
Um, and the benefit of this is that the email message is 100% your message with no other competing content or partners. Um, we do expect the list to be quite a bit larger by Q4, but if you're interested in testing out the smaller list sooner, we can definitely um, work something out for the small list right now. All right, moving on to Drupal Jobs. Um, traffic is continuing to grow, and we're really excited to say that we have over 1,000 registered job seekers on the site at this time and growing. Um, the association is continuing to add value and make improvements. Uh, we just added a lot of new features and benefits. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. Um, we just added a new feature for Drupal job subscribers. So there's this really high profile promotional featured company block. You can see in this example we're showing, showing Blink Reaction. Uh, it's on the home page of Drupal Jobs. And if you are a Drupal job subscriber, so if you purchase the annual subscription package where you get unlimited jobs, you also get a lot of added value um, on the promotional side of things with this regular rotation. We are also adding the ability for job seekers to sign up for a daily, weekly, or monthly email job alert that's based on their search preferences. Um, so if you could move on to the next slide, I've got an example of what that looks like. Um, it's based on their, their search parameters, so it's essentially keeping relevant job seekers a lot more engaged with the site, and they'll be notified of your new job postings right away. And then we do also have a featured company block in all of those email job alerts, um, so it's even more promotion for our Drupal job subscribers. And then lastly, and the next slide, as Joe mentioned, we just launched our Drupal newsletter that's going out to a list of about 40,000 subscribers on a weekly basis. And um, as a benefit to a featured job, in, in addition to getting listed at the top of the listings on the site, um, we're also going to be featuring featured jobs um, right in these newsletters every week. Um, and then that's all for now. But please do continue to send your feedback and let us know what we can do to help the employer experience on the Drupal job site. Thanks, Carrie, and Joe, and Josh. So uh, hopefully, as you can see, there's lots of stuff going on over here, um, which we're, we're so happy to have the team that we have, which is made possible by the support from, from you and the supportive programs. Uh, to be able to do so much more work for the community, to, to be able to do uh, a third con every year to help grow that community um, wherever we are and bring them into more fully into the Drupal, uh, the Drupal world, um, to be able to make the improvements that we're making for our Drupal developers on the Drupal.org platform, and you know, we're, and we're making changes there every single day, um, and to be able to increase the um, marketing capacity of uh, our Drupal shops and, and universe, and to get Drupal out there. Um, you know, in in the um, in the larger in the larger world uh, more fully. So all of that's possible because of you, and uh, we're just so grateful for uh, the opportunity to do this work with the community and with you. It's wonderful to work with you. So let us know how we return the favor for you. Besides using your money wisely here. Um, but uh, definitely feel free to reach out uh, to myself uh, or to your account managers, Don, Johanna, and Rachel. Um, I am just holly at association.drupal.org. Uh, but you can always keep up with what we're doing on the association blog uh, with our newsletter. Um, and definitely um, come check out the board meetings. Uh, I totally did not proofread this slide, I'm sorry. The meetings are actually the third Wednesday of each month now, not the second. Uh, they're noon Pacific time. So our next board meeting uh, is going to be on April 15th, uh, and that's another great way to sort of keep on top of what's going on in the, in the community. So we hope that you will follow us for more updates, but feel free again to reach out with any questions, and, and please do let me know how we can, uh, we can help make your experience with the association even better. And with that, I think we wrapped up everything. And I'll just say thanks one more time and um, giving us your time again this morning. And we will see many of you in Los Angeles. And have a great day. <laughs>